In this video, we're gonna be installing the GTS style taillights on the F33. Let's go. What's up everyone, I'm Steve and you're watching F33. Now if you like this video, give a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when a new video drops. Now I have wanted the GTS style taillights ever since I saw them. I don't know what is about them, but I just love the way they look. Now I got these taillights from Keys Motorsports last year, but I just haven't had a chance to install them until now. Now, as you know, the F33 is usually a little bit different than any other car when it comes to the installation of certain parts. The 4 Series is a lot like the 2 and 3 Series, but once you make that roof retractable, the game changes. Add to the mix that this is a pre-LCI, and it gets a little more challenging. Now, this is not a difficult install by any means. It just means that you need to figure out the right way to do it so that nothing interferes with how the top functions. Now, if you have an LCI F33, it's gonna be a piece of cake. But if you have a pre-LCI like me, you're gonna to have to run a few extra wires and order a trim piece for each of the taillights. Now, this is because the taillights are designed for the LCI cars. Now, it's not a deal breaker by any means, but there are a few extra parts and steps to get these new taillights installed. And I'll have everything linked in the description below that you'll need. Now, when you order these taillights from Keys Motorsports, they come very well packaged. Everything is wrapped nice and tight with padding in all the right places. And these lights, these lights are really good looking. Now, I decided to go with the red ones, but they also have smoked taillights as well. All right, so I have waited long enough Let's head out to the car and get these taillights installed. The tools needed for this install are an 8mm, 10mm, T30 Torx, trim tools, and pick tools. If you have a pre-LCI, you'll also need these additional tools. A heat gun, 20 gauge wire, low solder connectors, LCI trim pieces, zip ties, Tessa tape, wire strippers, and a wire cutter. The difficulty for this install is easy. All right, so I wanted to do a quick unboxing here. This is how Keys shipped it to me. You have a nice outer uh, kind of top layer here. Lots of padding, which is uh, always appreciated. All right, so once we remove that top layer, we got some extra foam here for protection. Um, Here's your outer tail lights, your inner tail lights, and then we have some cabling. So I'll go over the cabling really quick. Um, these wires here are for your outer tail light connections. All right, and then there's some extra resistors here, and this is if you're having issues with uh, the, the tail lights blinking. So we'll see if we need these or not. They come pre-installed with one, uh, but on the website, it says if you're still having blinking issues that you could add a second one to that. So we'll see if we have any of that. But if we do, that should help correct it. And then in the second bag here, we've got a couple different things. So uh, we've got the connector so that we can connect the, uh, uh, the inner tail lights. And then we have some ballasts. Um, these... I believe just uh, create some sort of resistance or something, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but these connect up to that wiring harness I just showed you for the inner tail lights. And they got some sticky tape uh, on the back there so you can mount it to the deck lid. And then there is some wiring uh, to connect if you have a pre-LCI, uh, the outer tail lights to the inner tail lights. These help with sequential uh, turn signals and things like that. Um, we're gonna use a portion of this, but we need to extend it because it's not gonna be long enough to do what we need to do for the convertible. And if you have a, an LCI, you don't need this. This is only for the pre-LCI, pre uh, but that's what this cable is. And then we have our inner tail light. And this is the one that goes on the trunk lid. 
This looks really, really nice. I really like this. And then you've got your, uh, how it mounts to the deck lid, your connector, you got some nice foam so it doesn't rattle and creates a nice seal. And then you have your outer tail lid or tail light. This looks so nice. So good. I love how these uh, scales or whatever you want to call it reflect with the light. And then up in the corner here, it says uh, M4 CS. I know it's not an M car, uh, but it is what it is. That's, that's what it says on there. But this looks really, really good. And of course, I've got the plastic on here. So, um, you know, obviously it's going to look much nicer without the plastic, but I want to keep these kind of scratch free uh, until, you know, during the installation. All right. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is that if you have a pre LCI car, you're going to need to buy uh, an additional trim piece. So the LCI and pre LCI have two different trim pieces and these lights or for the LCI version of the car. So if you have LCI, you've got everything you need in the box. But if you have a pre-LCI, you're gonna need to get the LCI trim. And so you can see that where it mounts, the, the, mounting, the mounting positions are different. Let me see if I can get this a little closer for you. So if you can see the mounting on there is quite different. And so that's going to affect how it hooks in and clips in to, uh, to the tail light. Like even over here, this is a little bit different where it hooks in. Um, I tried shaving this off here. However, when I did that, this piece was no longer hooked on to anything. And so I didn't really like that. Uh, the other thing you could do is after you shave that off, you could put some double stick tape and tape it onto the tail light, but I didn't want to go that route either. So I know it's, it's an extra expense, but to get this LCI trim piece, I think is the right way to do it. So, um, I will have links down below to where you can get these trim pieces. I got them off a of FCP Euro that way, if they ever break, well, I can get new ones for free. I love FCP Euro. Um, just their, their return policy is, is amazing. All right. So two more things for the pre LCI folks like me, you're going to need some extra wire. This is uh, some 20 gauge wire and it's going to help us get from the uh, outer tail light to the inner tail light and uh, still allow the top to function and retract and all that good stuff. And then these are pretty cool. These are uh, low heat solder, uh, connectors. Let me see if I can get up close here and show you what this looks like. Uh, basically you put two ends of the wire in here, you use a heat gun and then this low heat solder is going to melt and make that connection uh, very reliable. This is also waterproof, which is pretty awesome. And then it's got glue on either side that will melt and hook to the wire. And this is going to create a really, really nice connection when we take and extend those wires. So again, I will have all the links to everything in the description below to where you can pick all this stuff up. All right. Now that we did the unboxing and talked about some of the additional things that the pre LCI folks will need, let's get to the install. All right. So obviously the first thing that we'll need to do is to open the trunk. All right, and then we need to get a door off here so that we can actually remove the tail light. So this door is on there pretty tight. Uh, there's two clips here and you can use a pick tool. You can use a trim tool, but if you use a pick tool, you know, something sharp, uh, just obviously make sure that you're not going to scratch this all up, but essentially you just press the two tabs and then uh, this door will come off.
And then you've got two 10 millimeters here. Now, when you're removing these, be careful. Uh, they can drop down into the bumper and then you'll never find them again. Uh, in the comments, ask me how I know. So we'll just take and remove these. All right, and this is what they look like. All right, so once you've got those two 10 millimeters out, the tail light is more or less free. So we'll just take, put one hand here, the other hand in this slot here, and just pull straight out and the tail light will come out. Then there is a plug right here. You're just gonna press this little tab here and then pull straight out on the plug. And this is a little tight because it's got some weather stripping and stuff, but just pull straight out, you'll be fine. All right, so now the tail light is free. And if you have a LCI version, you're gonna wanna remove this trim piece. So there's just a series of clips down at the, um, underneath the, the trim piece. And then this will come off and you can attach it onto the new one. Since this is a pre-LCI model, we're going to use the new trim piece. Um, so we can just take this as a whole and, and go put it away. And then while you have this exposed, it is a good idea to clean. So just, uh, you know, clean the area really well. I already did mine in preparation for this. Um, but while, while the taillight's off, might as well do it. All right, so I have tested all of the lights out, uh, you know, connecting the outside light to the inner tail light, and I've made sure all of that worked. But before you start running all of these wires, make sure that the tail lights work, because otherwise, if you, you know, run the wires, do the solder connections, all that good stuff, and then the tail light doesn't work, you don't know why it's not working. You don't know if it's the tail light itself or if it's just your, your connections that you soldered. So test the lights first and then do the install. So on the uh, wiring that they give you, we're gonna start with this wiring um, and then we're going to, like I said, extend it. So on the wiring, it's gonna go through this hole. Now the tail light itself has a pin that goes through this hole. Uh, it is okay for both to go through, both will fit. Uh, I tested it out and there is enough room in this hole to fit both the wire and the pin and nothing is gonna get crimped or pinched or anything like that. So nothing to worry about there. Now, in order to fit this through, this hole is not big enough to fit the plug through. So we need to depin this, which is just two pins, um, so that we can get it through the hole and then we can put the pins back on. So I'm gonna get an up close here. All right, so this wire has both a female end and a male end. We're gonna use the male end here because it actually has the pins exposed so that we can remove the connector. So you're just gonna take a pick tool and you're going to press in on the pin and then pull out. And then make sure you, know, you remember what side's what, right? So. Um, when you go to connect this back together, um, just connect the male and the female side and make sure you're lining up, you know, red to red and black to black. So we'll just remove this other side. And now we can take and put this through that hole easily. Uh, and then, like I said, we're just gonna put this connection on. When we go to extend the wire, we're gonna clip it somewhere back, you know, back here, and we're gonna use the connections that they gave us to, you know, connect the two light, tail lights together, but we'll just clip somewhere back here um, to extend it. Now we have to do one more thing before we can actually run the wire through that hole, and that is to take the trim piece out uh, on the inside. Same way uh, that we do it if we're gonna change the battery, and that's basically to close the trunk and then you partially extend the roof so that the trunk is back 
and the roof is kind of out of the way. And what that's going to do is it's going to move this bar out of the way and then allow us to take the trim off from the inside. So let's go ahead and get the roof in the correct position. Okay, so now that we've got the top where we want it, we're just going to go ahead and take off all of these little uh, push pins that hold the trim in. And then this trim is going to come out and we're going to want to do that on both sides. Um, and this is kind of a, a, a tip for if you want to replace your battery, you're going to want to do this exact same thing. This is how you get to the battery easily. Otherwise, it is a giant pain in the behind. We're also going to remove the clips that hold on this plastic piece here. We're going to do that on both sides as well. Uh, so don't forget that. And this can move kind of in and out of the way. Uh, I have it down so that you can kind of see, see what I'm doing here. We're just going to take a trim tool and remove the pins. And the way these come out is there is an outer section here. And this is where your trim tool goes in and it's going to pull it apart. And then once it's apart, then you can pull it out. So they're all going to be exactly the same. For each trim piece, there are six of these push pins. And then for this plastic piece, there are three. All right, so once you have all of these removed, go ahead, put those on a side so you don't lose them. And then you can take this piece out. And then there is a uh, gas tank release here, this green plug. This is going to come out, just basically pull this out and um, depending, either the button will come out, but basically the way this works is this like plastic cord here, this clips into the plug. So uh, you'll want to pull out the, the plug and the cord, and then this just kind of pulls down in a way and it will come apart. And that's how you get it out of the carpet. So now you can just take that carpet, it's totally free, and put it aside. All right, and then for the plastic piece over here, we're just gonna pull this up so that we have a little bit more room. And then we'll take trim tool, do the exact same thing for the three. All right, so once you have all of those push pins removed, this piece can just be taken right off. All right, so this side is done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead off camera and do the other side, but it's exactly the same. Okay, so now that we have all the paneling off, we can run the cable through that hole. Now, the way this works is the hole on the outside is actually lower than the hole on the inside. So when you're putting it through, you're gonna wanna put it in and then up so that it can actually make it through to the other side. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to pull a decent amount of this cable through. Uh, like I said, we are gonna cut uh, a portion of it uh, to extend it, but there's a whole lot of cable here and we don't need that much on the outside of the car. So go ahead, pull through, a good amount, and you'll probably just want to leave, I don't know, maybe six or eight inches on the other side. And then once we get the tail light in, um, we can kind of kind of tuck them through. But you want to leave a little slack on the outside just so that if you need to remove the tail light for whatever reason, you, you have some slack, right? All right, so now that we have the wire run through, let's mount the outer tail light. All right, so we're ready to put the tail light on. We'll just take the OEM connector here, 
We'll take the connector for the new tail light, put them together. They only go in one way. And we'll take the smaller connector here and we'll just plug it into the wire that we ran. Make sure that it clicks. And then we will take our new tail light and plug it in. On the uh, connector that comes with the tail light, there's a green tab. You're going to want to press that in while you insert. And then once it's inserted, you just push that gray tab down and it will lock in place. To put the tail light in, we're just going to line up the ball of this tail light with this hole here. And then we're going to line up these posts, these screw posts, with uh, this section here on the tail light. And then one thing on how to uh, run this wire and this post that goes through is the wire should be on this side of the hole and then this can fit on the other side. Uh, there is enough space and this, this plug here has uh, slots in it basically so you can run the wire along that slot. And then any extra wiring will just kind of tuck down below out of the way. All right, and then to size the tail light appropriately to make sure that it's, you know, in and out uh, where it should be, there's some uh, screws here on each of the connections. And what this does is this allows the tail light to move in and out from the body of the car. That way it sits flush. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just close the trunk. Oh, that, <laughs> that looks so good. Um, and it looks like the tail light sits flush, so I think we're good there. It sits flush with the trunk. It sits flush with the bumper. It does not sit totally flush with the uh, OEM inner tail light, but that's because this tail light is a little thinner. So the new tail light will sit out just a little bit, uh, and that way it'll be, it'll be totally flush. But as far as the trunk and the bumper is concerned, it sits completely flush. All right, now before we get this all tightened down, we actually need to put the new trim piece in place. So let's take off the door for this. That way we can screw the tail light in place. And we'll take the tail light out here. Okay, and so basically there's a bunch of clips here and you're just gonna line up those clips. You're gonna wanna start with the bottom. So there's some tabs on the bottom here. And you just line up those tabs and everything else will kind of line, line up together. There's also this section here that you're gonna to wanna to line up. So just kinda of get all the tabs, everything lined up together. And it's all gonna clip, and then you can just push this front piece in, and it will clip in place. And now this is totally on there, looks completely OEM. So let's get this tail light back on. Okay, and then we'll screw it down. All right, and then we can take our door and we can pop that in place. Look at that, looks OEM, fresh new door. I'll wait to, uh, to peel this plastic off for when we're done. 
So now it's time to put in the inner tail light. Now there are two push pins that um, hold in a panel just underneath this tail light. And if you have an LCI, that is all you're gonna need. Um, but because we're running a pre-LCI and we need to route cables up and into this section here, we're actually gonna need to take off this whole um, inner panel here as well as both uh, panels underneath the inner tail light. So I think there's something like 13 push pins that hold this top piece in place. And like I said, there's two push pins that hold in the plastic uh, cover for the inner tail light. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those right now. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is what they look like. Okay, and once you get the two out, then this piece will slide off. And this is the cover that I was talking about. All right, so I went ahead and got the other side out. Now we can go ahead and remove all the rest of the push pins. So there's three up on top here. And then there's nine that kind of go across the outer perimeter. Okay, and then there are two more up in the top kind of middle here. And then there's also a emergency release that we'll have to uh, remove as well so that we can get this liner off. Okay, so to remove this emergency lever, uh, you're basically gonna take and push in this, this tab here and then just kind of twist this out So basically push this part back and then pull the trunk release this way and this part will come off. Inside the handle, there are two T30 uh, torque screws. So you'll need to remove those as well. Um, it's in a super awkward uh, place, so it's really difficult to film, but I'll show you what that looks like after we get them removed. All right, so this is what that looks like. This is a T30 and it's right there in the handle. There's two of them. Okay, so that should be it. That should be all that's holding that. So we'll just take this, pull this down, and then you'll have uh, for this switch here, there's a blue wire connecting that. That blue wire should just pop out, okay? And then you have a light up here and that wire should pop out as well. Okay. So we finally have this out. Go ahead and put that aside. And when we put in those ballasts for the inner tail light, we'll probably put them somewhere in here so that they're kind of inset uh, and they don't interfere with the lining. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove this inner tail light now. You're gonna need an eight millimeter. And I'll show you once this is out, but there is an eight millimeter underneath that you'll have to undo. All right, so I've heard some people say that you don't need to remove this eight millimeter all the way, uh, but I'm getting stuck. I'm getting hung up on this. So I went ahead, removed that all the way, and that allows me to take this plastic piece off here. And then I'm gonna unplug, make sure you unplug the light. You're gonna push up on the tail light, and this is just gonna twist right off. 
So here's the plug and what that looks like. Basically, there's a little tab on the inside that you push down and then you'll pull it out. And then the way this sits, in here is here's your eight millimeter. So picture you're like this, your eight millimeters in here. Uh, I took that all the way out and then I pulled this clip off. Cause what this clip does is this pinches in between the tail light and the trunk of the car. So I wasn't getting enough um, space to be able to tilt this out. So I took the whole thing off. And that allowed me to tilt this all the way out. Okay, so to install the inner tail light, what I did was I just backed this eight millimeter up as far as I could without taking it off. We'll see if we can get this in. Um, and then there's just some tabs here that are gonna line up with the deck lid. So we'll just put this in like this. And then I'm gonna tilt this out like this and we'll push in and down and it looks like it looks like that works where I, I was able to get this to line up so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that eight millimeter down and don't go don't go crazy because that clip is plastic you just don't, you just want it to hold. You don't want it to be moving anywhere. And it looks like this is sitting nice and flush the way we want it. So that all looks good. Awesome. Let's do a, a test here. Okay, and I just did a test and this fit perfect. Um, this is also locked in place now. Okay, so the next thing to do is to actually plug it into the car. We've got our, our ballast here, and then we've also got uh, the wiring harness supplied by the light. So we're gonna take the red and we're gonna plug that into the new light. And it only goes in one way. And then we will take the ballast, plug that in with the colors that match. So this is blue, black, and brown. That just clips together there. And then for right now, before we start chopping wires, I'm going to connect this up here. And these just slide in. Okay. Then go ahead and plug them together. All right, and then we'll take this black end here, and this is gonna plug into the OEM plug. There we go. All right, so for all intents and purposes, the lights are fully hooked up and connected. Um, yes, we need to tie this in into here figure out a good spot. Actually, there's a, there's a good spot up in here um, that we can connect it. And then, yes, we need to extend the wire and the, how we're gonna extend the wire is basically along the existing wire that runs into the trunk. So we're gonna follow that along. Um, but right now I wanna test out these taillights and make sure everything is working the way it should. All right, so let's give it a test. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the car. <laughs> nice. All right. And then we'll unlock the car. Oh, that is cool. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and do, you do the turn signals. That looks really good. I love the sequential lights. That's awesome. All right, and let's see what it looks like with the DRLs on. Oh, that looks so good. Press the brake light. 
Yes. That looks, oh, I'm so excited. So now that we know that this works, we need to go ahead and extend the wiring into the trunk using that additional wiring and the low solder connections that I showed you earlier. And one other thing before we start running the wires, uh, we need to take this side piece off. We only need to do it on one side because that's the only side that the wires run on. So on the passenger side, just remove the trim tabs here. And then after you remove those three, this piece is going to lift off and here you can see this is that wire that cable loom that runs up and this is what we're going to follow okay so here comes the fun part it's actually not as bad uh, as it looks it's actually pretty easy to follow the wires and as long as you follow the cable loom and you zip tie it tightly to it so that the wires don't move uh, then you should be fine because this cable loom doesn't move and it is zip tied and it goes all the way from the deck lid where the tail lights wires are run all the way to, you know, through the hinges and everything. So you'll be totally fine if you follow this wire loom all the way through. Now this part down here does not move. So this is actually where you're going to start when you run the wires. So right here, you'll see this is where the loom starts. So you can actually run up kind of maybe the back of it or something like that, and then zip tie uh, both wires that you're running to it. And then you're gonna run this, this loom runs down here, up. It's attached to this bar here. It runs up and then it switches sides of the bar and it runs up, it runs up. And then you'll actually see it runs underneath this hinge here comes out the other side, loops back around, okay, goes down, goes down, loops back under that bar, comes out, and then it goes right into all of this right here, which is where we're going to split out to go to each side. So it's not bad. Just follow this loom and you'll be perfectly fine. Again, this doesn't move. So as the trunk, you know, flips and rotates and, you know, does its transformer deal when, you, when you're putting the top up and down, um, it's going to be totally fine. Uh, so like I said, just start right here where this loom comes out of where the hinges are and you'll be fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is from the driver's side, that tail light over there, I'm going to run underneath uh, the panel. Uh, and you'll see if you take off the, the bottom of the trunk, the floor of the trunk, you'll see wires and stuff for, uh, for the top, like the hydraulic lines and stuff. And you'll be able to connect both sides together. And if you watch my, uh, my BAV sound uh, amplifier install video, you'll see I ran the power lines uh, the same direction because the battery's over here, the amp's over there, and we had to run power lines. I ran it through the same channel. So I'm just gonna use that channel. We're gonna run that side over to here, and then both wires are going to start here, run through you know, all the spaghetti that it runs through to end up where they split off again to go um, to the taillights. So let's go over to the table, and I'm gonna show you uh, how to solder the wires so that you'll have enough length to go both sides. 
but basically um, we're gonna cut eight feet. It's a, it's a total of 20 feet that comes in the, in the wire, uh, the, the additional wire. And you're gonna cut eight feet on one side and then the other side is, is gonna be the rest. Um, so that'll be enough you know, to get the driver's side over to here and then back over to the driver's side. That'll, you'll have plenty. Plus you have the wiring that the taillight comes with and this is like four feet of wire too. So you can actually run the driver's side all the way over to the passenger side with the wiring that comes from Keys Motorsports. And then basically what you can do is you can just clip the end here if you want and then use this up by the, the inner tail light uh, and then run the extension through the rest of it, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. So let's head over to the table and I'll show you how to heat shrink the wire. Okay, so I have cut the end of the wire that comes off of the tail lights uh, from Keys and I've already cut to length uh, the extra cord that I need. And so right now we're just gonna go ahead and strip both ends of the wire. Uh, I've got wire strippers here and I'll put a link in the description to these. These things are amazing. Uh, also, I've got a heat gun here and what I, the, what I have on top here is one of those like uh, deflectors that kind of makes the heat go on top as well, so it makes doing what we're doing a lot easier. I've got uh, some cutters, and then I also have the low solder connectors here, and the ones that we're gonna use are the red ones, and basically we're just going to strip some of the wire and you know use this low solder on the red side and the black side to connect the wires, and then we'll use uh, some, you know, Tesla tape or something like that to cover up um, these solder connections. And these have glue on them. I think I mentioned earlier they've got glue on them as well as the solder, and they heat shrink around. So I mean, these these things are absolutely amazing. All right, so we're gonna take one end here. This is the end from uh, that came with the tail lights. And we're gonna strip off a good amount. Um, I would say, I don't know, probably maybe an inch and a half, two inches off of here. So this is the insulation that we're gonna strip off. And a good measure is basically you wanna have, you know, more than this heat shrink. And the reason is, is because we need to get the heat shrink on and have some available so that we can push the wire strands together from both sides so that we get a really good connection. So it looks like uh, I stripped off about an inch or so here. I'm gonna strip off a little bit more so that I have uh, enough to work with. All right, so it looks like this is gonna give me a good amount. Hopefully you're able to see that. And we'll just test it out here by putting the wire through. And we've definitely got enough here so this this will work out nicely. All right, so we'll take the other side. We're gonna do the exact same thing and I'll use this as a measurement here. All right. And then what I'm gonna strip off from these is, I don't know, I usually go to, uh, you know, where this, where this yellow uh, marker is here. Okay, and then we'll do the one from Keys. All right, so we've got both sets here, and now we'll take one of the red low temperature solders and we'll put it over one side. All right, and then what I like to do is just spread this out on both sides, and then I can mix them together. 
and I feel like that's going to give me a really good connection. You know, maybe it's a little overkill, but that's what I like doing. So I go like that, and then I kind of twist them together. And I put this over, and then the tin solder is going to go right in the middle. I'm going to turn on my heat gun. I'm using 400 degrees. And then I'm just going to put it inside and watch it melt. I don't really need to move it too much because this heat gun deflector really covers the majority uh, of this low temperature solder connector. But I'm just going to turn it a little bit. I don't need to turn it a lot because again that heat deflector is going to go on the, the back and top. But just kind of move it around a little bit. And then once I see the solder melted and the glue on each end melted, I know I'm in a, I'm in a good spot and this connection is, is good to go. All right. So this looks really good. Let me, let me get up close here with the camera. See if we can get a good shot of that. That looks really good. You can see the glue on each side is melted and the solder is melted. So you just want both sides to look like that. All right, so we'll go ahead and do the other side. Again, we're just going to spread this out a little bit. We'll mix the other end in. Twist them together. Get our heat gun going. And then slide this over so that the tin is right over our connection point. And it's okay if you, you know, get your previous wire in there under the heat gun. It's not going to hurt it to, you know, get warm again. It's already glued in place. All right, I can see that tin starting to melt. All right. Looks like we're good to go. I'm just going to let that cool down a little bit. And then what we'll do is uh, I'll just take some uh, Tesla tape and wrap these together so that it, you know, is one wire, you know, again, it's actually already almost cool. So once I get that wrapped up, then we can go ahead and start running it. I'll just get a close up here of what this looks like. There we go. And this is a this is a good solid connection. Like these are these are really in there. You can see you pull on them and they're not going anywhere. So this is nice and solid. The other thing I like about using these is they're also waterproof. So because that glue surrounded it and you have the heat shrink jacket that's around it, um, these are now waterproof connections, which is great. So before we go ahead and solder the other end of this, I am going to leave this end, you know, as it is, run it through. That way it doesn't get caught on anything. And once I get it run to the bottom of where the, uh, the passenger tail light is going to connect, I'm going to solder both wires at that point. And probably what I'll do is I'll put a little tape on one side so that I know, you know, the driver's side versus the passenger side, because I'm going to run them both together so that it's nice and clean and I can zip time and all that good, good stuff. So I'll probably put some uh, electrical tape or some way of marking that this one is for the driver's side. Uh, and then, like I said, once I get to the passenger side uh, taillight where I'm going to start both of these, then 
uh, I'll, I'll solder them in the trunk to the uh, Keys Motorsports wires. Okay, so both cables have been extended. The turn signals work and they, they look amazing. I can't wait for you to see the B-roll after this is done. But basically I did test the tape, uh, Tesla tape, I'm not sure how you say it, um, but the fabric tape, I did that almost the whole way through connecting the wires. So starting on the other side, basically I zip tied all along. So, uh, you know, basically anywhere that there was a zip tie from the factory, I went through and zip tied it so that I knew that it wasn't going to move. I knew that it was going to stay in place. So every single place that there is a factory zip tie, I had zip tied it. All right. And so basically we went right around up through here, down, and then this right here, this is kind of cool. So this is a plastic, uh, I don't know, like uh, cable holder. There was actually enough room, I popped this open, there's just two little clips on the bottom. It just spreads apart, and I was able to fit the uh, extended wire in that, so that that way, you know, it's held in the factory location. That comes out and kind of, uh, what, so it comes down this way, goes up through that factory tunnel, um, and then it comes up here, zip tied, zip tied, goes through, back around, and now it follows through here, all zip tied right along, okay? And then as it comes down to the very bottom down here, there's a little like plastic, uh, I'll call it a funnel, but basically it's like a little plastic clip where the wires are running out and I fed the wires through that and that's just right, right here. Wires come up, zip tied here, right at the base of where this kind of hinge mechanism is, um, is at. And then you'll see the OEM wire loom will go through and then down. I would have loved to run it through there, but there's just not enough room. This is meant for this cable and this cable alone. So um, what I did was I ran it right down here. And in the metal, there's a bend in the metal um, that actually keeps the wire in place, which is cool. So right in the back of this bracket here, let me see if I can kind of zoom into that. Okay, so basically, you know, like I said, wire comes down, comes to here, and then goes straight down, and here's a bracket here, and it goes behind the bracket, and then connects to, uh, to the passenger tail light wire, and I just kind of tucked that stuff down. And then the driver side wire I actually have running that way and it goes underneath. There's a, a piece of carpet, you'll see what I mean. Uh, and it runs under that and then through the middle of the car. So let me move the camera so that you can kind of see the path that it took. It's gonna be obvious when you have this, um, you know, in front of you and the carpet out, it's gonna be really obvious where I'm talking about, but I'd like to show it on video just so that everybody can see uh, before you take this on. Okay, so right now you're on the driver's side facing the passenger side. So this side is where the battery is, okay? So the wire is running underneath this fabric piece and comes right out here. So right here is the wire and it's coming underneath underneath here, and then it goes underneath this same thing on the driver's side and meets up with that tail light. So there's a, a, there's a nice little channel here, and you can see I actually ran, this is the power cable for the bath sound amp. So it runs in this nice little channel here, uh, and you, know, you can cover it up with the carpet, and it'll you know, look completely OEM. And then basically I just stuffed the rest of the cable uh, down by where the amplifier is, and that's it.
This is really easy. Um, you know, when I first took a look at doing this, I was a little nervous just because of the hinge mechanism. I wanted to make sure that nothing was going to get caught up as the car was, you know, converting. And as I started to look at it, where the wires were running, the, the wire loom, it became clear that, you know, this is very easy, very doable. As long as you follow that stock wire loom, everything's fine. All right, so I know some of you love the sound of peeling plastic. I do too, I don't know what it is. Um, but uh, let's do a little bit of plastic peeling ASMR. Oh, that, that looks amazing. This is the first time I'm seeing it without the plastic covering on it. All right, let's see them light up. Oh, that looks awesome. That looks so good. All right, let's see what the turn signals look like. All right, let's check out the brake lights. Wow, those, those are bright. These lights, uh, from what I've noticed, are so much brighter than the OEM ones. And I had LEDs for the brake lights as well. Um, so these are brighter than the LED replacements that I put in the OEM housings. These look, these look amazing. All right, so I have everything all buttoned up. Uh, it's basically just what we did in reverse. Really, really easy. There's nothing really uh, that you need to watch out for. Obviously, test the opening and closing of the trunk a few times. Also, do the comfort opening of the trunk where, you know, if the top is down, it raises everything up just to make sure that you have enough slack in all the right places. Uh, but once you do, just go ahead and put the panels back on and you're good to go. All right, so I know you all been waiting. Why don't we cut to some sweet B-roll of these GTS style taillights.
Now, as you saw, installing the GTS style taillights from Keys Motorsports is really easy and should only take you about an hour or so to install. Now, I love the startup animation and the sequential turn signals. I mean, these taillights really transform the look of the car. Now, I wanna give a huge shout out to Keys Motorsports for always having fantastic parts for our cars. I always know that when I'm ordering something from them, it's a quality part, and it comes with excellent customer service. Keep up the good work, guys. Now, as always, I have put links in the description below to all the products and tools needed for this install. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, smash it if that's what you're into, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next one. God bless.